Getting a big set of quads can often be a 50-50 interest in the fitness world. You know, you have a lot of people who simply tend to skip leg day, and there are a lot of people who are actually really passionate about training legs. But regardless of the fact if you are hitting your legs, or not, there are still a lot of mistakes that are being made on a pretty frequent basis that make the workouts that you're hitting less effective overall. You could be performing all the quad exercises that you want, but if you're not utilizing the correct biomechanics, utilizing the correct training volume, and picking the best training strategies to get the best quads that you can build, the chance of you growing your quads is pretty small. So in this video I'm going to be going in depth on everything that you need to know in order to grow a big set of legs and specifically when it comes to the quads. First off, let's cover the anatomy and biomechanics of the quads. Right, so the quads are composed out of four muscles. The vastus lateralis, or the outer sweep of the quad. The vastus medialis, or the teardrop. And the vastus intermedius, which lies in the middle, which all act to extend the knee, or also known as the knee extension. And then lastly, we have the rectus femoris, which acts as both a knee extensor and a hip flexor. So in order to train the quads most effectively, you should be picking exercises that both extend the knee and flex at the hip. The most popular exercise has got to be the squat. It's an amazing exercise since it covers a lot of the necessary biomechanical functions of the quads and allows for a great deal of potential progressive overload. Now there's a lot of controversy going around whether you truly have to barbell back squat in order to build great legs. And if you look at it logically, there are no true must-do exercises. You can build a very impressive set of legs by just doing leg press, but since the squat is an exercise that is really suitable for progressive overload, it would be the best option to go for if you can perform the exercise comfortably and effectively. And if you can't, a hack squat, a Bulgarian split squat, or any kind of squat variation or leg press variation will do the trick just fine. Now let's go over how to properly execute a barbell squat. You should position the rack at around armpit height so that you can comfortably unrack the bar without having to stand on your toes, which is something that I still see happening way too often and truly increases the risk of injury since you have the potential to lose balance. Grip the bar just outside of shoulder width, placing the bar either on your upper traps, or also known as high bar, or rear delts, which is also known as low bar. Now in terms of pure quad activation, you would be better off opting for the high bar position since you're better able to keep an upright torso and let the majority of the movement come from knee extension. But all in all, it's always most optimal to simply go for the bar placement that's most comfortable for you and which allows you to overload the exercise to your best capability. Take a deep breath into your diaphragm, also known as bracing, which allows you to keep your lower back safe during the movement and explosively unrack the bar. Once you've unracked the bar, be sure to take two steps back to avoid hitting the rack during the movement and start standing in the proper squatting position. Now, whether you should stand with your feet close together or with your feet further apart is also largely down to personal preference. This, again, simply comes down to whichever foot positioning allows you to squat most comfortably and which allows you to overload the squat most effectively. Close stances are often known to be a little bit more quad dominant, since a wide stance often allows the hips to come a bit more into play. But again, comfortability and overload potential is probably more important in the long run. Be sure that you're pointing your toes either forward or slightly out. And again, this is something that will come down to personal preference. As long as you're not pointing them inwards, you're pretty much set to go. Now, before we go over the proper exercise execution, I'd like to dismiss the myth that it's bad to let your knees come over your toes. This has been debunked many times by many experts in the field, since these issues only often occur when only breaking at the knee joint, which obviously allows your knees to come forward to an exaggerated extent. The squat is a multi-joint movement, or also known as a compound, so be sure to treat it as one. Before descending, Take another deep breath to brace your core properly and allow yourself to break at the hips and at the knees. As you descend, focus on pushing your knees forward and slightly out in order to keep them in a straight line with your toes. Make sure your heels are remaining in contact with the floor at all times as you balance your weight on the heels, pinky toe and big toe to prevent any loss of balance or explosive power. This will also allow you to keep a straight bar path, which allows you to perform the exercise most effectively. 
always be sure to lower the bar under control, applying a control negative, and make sure to hit at least parallel depth, or if you're able to, allow your hips to come under your knees, to ensure full range of motion and maximal stretch and contraction of the quads. Throughout the movement, ensure you keep an upright torso. This doesn't necessarily mean to push your chest up, since this can cause the lower back muscles to generate a little bit more tension than it might need, but at least put in effort to maintain an upright torso to ensure you maintain proper form throughout the movement. Be sure to reset your brace after every rep to ensure that you're keeping your form consistent with every rep that you perform. This is not an exercise that you should be applying any kind of intensity techniques with, such as keeping constant tension, since the potential risk of injury is just way too big and you're better off reserving that for more isolation based exercises such as a leg press or a leg extension. Since the squat is a compound movement, I recommend sticking to the 5 to 10 rep range with a moderate to heavy load, placing a big emphasis on applying progressive overload over time in the form of adding reps or weight to your programming. Next up is lunges. Now this can be turned into either a quad dominant exercise or a hamstring and glute dominant exercise and it pretty much only boils down to how you perform the exercise. Now regardless of the fact that it hits the entire leg musculature in general, if you perform it in the way that it's a little bit more quad dominant, it can be a very solid choice to include in your quad routine. There are lots of variations when it comes to lunges. You, know, you have walking lunges, reverse step lunges and even the Bulgarian split squat could be seen as a variant since you're positioning yourself in a lunged position. But for this video, we're going to opt for the walking lunges. So like I said, in order to place the most emphasis on the quads, you need to allow your knees to travel forward. This will put more emphasis on the knee extension component of the movement, allowing the quads to generate more tension. Longer steps stimulate the hamstrings and the glutes more, and smaller steps stimulate the quads more. Since this is not a true compound movement with heavy loading, it's okay to play around with these biomechanics. While performing the lunges, be sure to let the knee from your back leg come down to the point where it's right above the floor, so not touching it, to allow for a full range of motion, and let your upper body come towards the front leg as you lunge down. A common error that most people make with walking lunges is trying to stay as upright as possible, which actually only allows you to risk losing balance. By using your entire body to make the lunge, instead of just your legs, you'll be in a far more stable position to generate the most amount of force, allowing you to complete your reps comfortably. Now you can opt for the barbell lunge or the dumbbell lunge, which doesn't really make any difference when it comes to quad activation. So the general rule of pick whichever variant you can perform comfortably and overload to your best capability definitely comes to play. For this exercise, I recommend going for a moderate rep range of 8 to 15 reps per leg, so 16 to 30 total steps, since it's a more isolation type exercise, which would be wise to load more heavily than that due to the increased risk of injury, and loading it lighter and going for even more reps might cause your cardiovascular system to fatigue way before your quads do. Now and lastly, to finish off the quads, we have the leg extension. Now, the leg extension is a true isolation exercise since you can pretty much only perform knee extension, which is the main function of the quads. Now it's a very common error to perform this exercise with a pretty fast speed since, well, it truly burns. But in order to get the most out of this isolation exercise, be sure to control the entire movement. Yet when it comes to proper execution, there are still a lot of potential mistakes to be made. You want to position yourself in the best position possible to purely put the tension on the quads. When setting up for this exercise, be sure to pick a weight that is not too heavy, for reasons which I'll come to in a second. Place the machine in a position where you're fully able to stretch and contract the quads, utilizing a full range of motion, which will generally be the setting where you put your legs in the most stretched position to begin the exercise with. In general, I recommend you to point your toes forward, since that'll ensure that you train all heads of the quads evenly. Now, unless you can truly say that the vastus lateralis or the vastus medialis is lagging behind, you can point your toes out to put more tension on the teardrop of the quad, which is on the inside of the leg, or point your toes inward to put more tension on the outer sweep of the quad. 
But in general, like I said, I always just advise people to go for the safest option, which is pointing the toes forward. Pull your butt into the seat and keep your butt pulled into the seat for the entire duration of the exercise. What often happens when picking a weight that is too heavy, your butt will come up due to the fact that the weight is simply forcing you to do so, which will take away from the quad simulation, which is obviously not the goal. And once you're fully in position, fully extend your knee in order to put the quads under maximal contraction and slowly let the weight come back under control to the beginning position. Right, so those are the top three quad exercises to get the most out of your quad development. I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something from it. If you did, please be sure to smash the like button because it truly helps out the channel grow. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel and turn post notifications on for so much more content coming really soon. I'm out guys and peace out. See you in the next one.